Hi ghouls, it's Heather and for today's video I wanted to share with you all the things that I like to collect. So I have a few of my favorites set aside next to me and I'm going to be sharing them and why they're so special to me and then I'm going to jump over to showing you all my little collection shelf that I have at the moment. It's not really much to look at, um, there's not really much on it yet, but I like that because it means that the collection has infinite possibilities for what I could add to it, how I can display different objects, and it's exciting and fun and that's what collecting should be about. It should be about you know, the journey of building a collection and the stories behind how you got each object, not so much about having this incredible collection to show off because for me like this isn't even about showing off these are just objects that inspire me and inspire my art so anyway enough blabbing let's jump into the objects so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little warning out there that if you don't like seeing images of death uh, don't watch this video or skip ahead a little bit because this next object is a post-mortem photograph so here she is. I purchased this incredible post-mortem photograph, um, I think two months ago now at an antique shop locally. And basically I was there going through their photos. Um, I had like a good chunk of photography already set aside on the counter. And right as they were about to close, I was like, you know what, I just want to go upstairs and see what else they had. So in a glass case, this incredible piece was sitting there and the price was so good. And I just couldn't believe it because I had been wanting to add some postmortem to my collection, but they're so expensive and rather hard to find locally. So I got really lucky with this piece. Um, there were two images there, but that image just didn't have the depth and beauty that I feel that this one has. Um, just how the candles are around her, the camera angle. I just feel like this is such a beautiful photo that really captures the emotion of someone's last bit of time here on earth. Um, I feel like this image would have been very comforting uh, to her loved ones. So it's just so detailed and beautiful and just how this was shot. I just really appreciate um, the photographer's work on this. Um, it's just so beautiful and that's why I had to have it. So I just want to be very clear that um, I have great respect for this image and I understand like the heaviness of the subject matter and that this is somebody's loved one and um, so I'm definitely taking good care of it and really appreciating it. And um, I just really love this piece a lot. And it's by far like one of my favorite pieces in my collection. So I'm actually wearing gloves because I don't want to smudge anybody up. <laughs> so the next piece we have here, this is a much uh, happier piece. This is a tin type of two women and they could be sisters, they could be cousins, but I was told that they believe this woman is pregnant, probably because of how she has her hand on her stomach. She could be, I will never have any way of knowing, but um, this piece is incredibly meaningful to me and special, not just because it's absolutely gorgeous, but because my boyfriend got this for me. So I'm currently dating someone who is absolutely amazing, like the man of my dreams. I just can't believe my luck that I found him. And so we were out on a date whenever like, we weren't like completely official yet, but we were seeing each other. And this date was on the day before my birthday. And we were sitting in a parking lot after like we went out to the mall for a little bit. And he told me to pull this out of his glove box. He had it all wrapped up. 
and I opened it and saw this tin type and he's like I wanted you to have more of your little Victorian friends <laughs> and I almost started crying and I seriously wanted to kiss him then we haven't we hadn't even had our first kiss yet but in that moment I was like oh my gosh this is the one <laughs> I just wanted to kiss him um, we ended up having our first kiss later that night and that was like the day we became like officially dating so um, this is always gonna be very special to me um, mainly because he really like listened to the things that I'm interested in and he appreciates the fact that I like this stuff and he took the time to find just such a beautiful piece. It's stunning. It fits in my collection so well and I'm always going to cherish this one that's for sure. I'm going to frame it at some point and like put it up all nice but um, it's become my favorite tin type because of just the thought that went into it and him of course he's incredible and yeah so anyway that's that one <laughs> so this next one uh you guys have already seen before and oh my she is getting a little bit dusty <laughs> my whole collection needs a really good dusting um so i was at an oddities expo in Philadelphia over the spring of last year and I got this huge tin type of these two women and they have some fancy clothes on super fancy this tin type is massive just crazy so here's like here's a regular tin type and then here's this one so please pardon my ignorance on the subject I'm not an expert in any means in this early photography. I don't know everything about it yet. Not even close. I'm still educating myself and learning, but um, I'm going to take a wild guess that you had to have had a lot of money to get a tintype this big. That's just a wild guess I'm taking. <laughs> so this next piece kind of looks like we could be twinsies. <laughs> So I was at a local oddity shop in Pittsburgh called The Weeping Glass and they had this gorgeous cabinet card sitting there and I just completely fell in love with her. I love her outfit. It is incredible, the detailing. And that's, I think, a big reason why I collect um, this early photography is because in the time period when photography was introduced and people were able to start getting their images taken the fashion is just crazy i love it so whenever i collect these i'm also kind of gushing over their fashion um as fun as like these early images are, just like the way they're displayed and stuff, um, I love the fashion. I think it's so cool. So she's an absolute favorite. I just, I love her. She fits in here so well. On the back of the card, it says 1899 was the date that someone scribbled on there. So that might be when it was taken. So this next one is a sweet little girl that I wanted to adopt over the summer and I kept seeing her at this antique mall and I would end up not buying her and finally recently I was like, you're coming home with me. So this is another tin type that's in this, um, this slip here. And there you go, now you can maybe see the detailing on that slip cover. So inside is this absolutely adorable, grumpy little girl. And I just think she's so cute and I love her little boots. So I actually ended up naming her Alice because that same vendor was selling this autograph album and it's for a girl named Alice. So you know how whenever you look at an old photograph, you wonder who that person was, what was their name, what was their life like? I think that's really fun to think about and to come up with a little story for each piece over. Well, I kind of came up with that this is Alice and this is her little autograph album about her life. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it adds a little bit more of um, the human element back to these images. So here is one of my autograph albums. I actually have three of these 
and I love these. I just think they're so cool, especially when I find local ones that are signed by people like in my town. It's crazy. So the front of this album is really interesting. Um, I think there's a, a man putting out a fire. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it seems like he's like throwing a bucket of water at something. And then there's this girl on there. On the first page, it says Alice, and there's like some little like uh, plants drawn around Alice on there. It says, uh, I wish you good luck your joy to be plenty and a nice little husband before you are 20. And that was from Mary Bannon. And it does not have the date, but most of this in this album is from the 1890s. So this next page is kind of creepy and that's why I wanted to read it to you guys. It says, here lies my name when I am dead and all my bones are rotten. These few lines will tell my name when others are forgotten. And her name was Lizzie C. Glass. So I'm going to have to look into Lizzie and see what her story was. <laughs> that I thought was just really eerie because um, these really are things that people left behind and those people are long since gone. And I think that's what's so fascinating uh, to me with collecting these antiques and these photographs. It's because these are really pieces of another time, a time that will never happen again. And it's just so interesting to like have something that someone who lived it wrote in. Oh, I love stuff like this. <laughs> so um, somewhere there is her name, like someone wrote out her name on one of these pages. Uh, this page is from January 1st, 1889. Uh, it's just, it's very cool to me and I love it. So um, I'm going to do a little research on this album to see if we can find out more about its owner. So this next one, you guys have seen a hundred times, but it's still a favorite of mine, and in case you haven't seen my other antique video, I thought I would share it. So this is my one and only hair piece, and I think it's absolutely stunning. Can you believe this is hair? Look at that weaving. Like, you would never know it was hair unless someone really pointed it out or you knew what you were looking for. I mean, it just looks like really nice rope or something. Um, so this is a watch fob. I mistakenly thought that it was a necklace in the past, um, though it's awfully tiny, though I guess a child could have worn this, but um, I came to learn that it's actually a watch fob. So there is this locket piece on it, but that was all me. Um, I found this little locket at a local shop and I realized that it matched the hardware of this perfectly. So I decided to buy it and pop it on there because I kind of felt like they belong together. To me, it just feels like a silky piece of rope. It's really something special, that's for sure. And I love having this in my collection. I'm trying to get more of these hair items. Um, they seem to get pretty expensive. Uh, it seems like some people just get lucky and find them for pretty cheap. Like I found this at a flea market, got a good deal on it. So this next piece is an ambrotype and ambrotypes are the main thing that I collect right now. Um, I actually have a few on the way in the mail. Uh, I've become a little bit obsessed with ambrotypes and I do have a daguerreotype on the shelf. Um, I just don't really like handling it too much because it's like such a nice piece. Um, but basically whenever I was in high school, I took photography class, which I was terrible at because we had these black and white film cameras and I wasn't good at it at all. <laughs> Um, so in photography class, we learned about the history of photography and we learned about daguerreotypes and 
whenever I was out antiquing, I started looking for them. And of course I couldn't afford them at the time because I was a broke high schooler, but I had always dreamed of owning a daguerreotype or an ambrotype in my collection. And now I have a few and it's really exciting. So what's really cool about this piece is that this is a ruby ambrotype. So this image was created on a dark red glass and it's absolutely beautiful to look at her under the light. So her name is Hilda. That is the name that I went with for her. And Hilda is like really special to me because she's kind of like my personal muse. Um, my art right now focuses on the subject of decay. And I'm also very inspired by um, early photography. So she has the best of both worlds. I mean, this image is absolutely decaying. Um, and then she has that one eye that just absolutely glows. I thought that maybe she may have had two different colored eyes. Uh, that's not the case at all. It's just because of how the image is decaying that her eye looks like that but it makes her so interesting and i absolutely love this piece i think she's incredible i would like to get her a new case because she is so special to me so um i do plan to actually uh put her in a new case her case is a uh, pretty badly damaged at this point. So here we have another ambrotype that was made to look like it's a 3D image. So, whoa, don't wanna drop this one. So basically the back of the image was kind of like shaved away to make her look 3D. It's kind of hard for me to explain the process, but her name is Eliza and I got her for $15, which is pretty good. Uh, so she came with this really cool stand that someone made, which is very helpful because this thing is all smashed up and it's nice to have a way to actually display and enjoy her. Um, I really like actually how she is cracked up. So the last favorite of mine is a piece that you have all seen before a bunch of times, but this is for the people that haven't seen my collection yet. Um, so this is a match safe and it's made from silveroin, which is basically a mix of metals uh, to kind of give the look of silver without the expense basically. Um, so this match safe has kind of a fun story behind it and I've, already shared it in the past but like I said if you haven't seen it or whatever um, so basically whenever I was 19 I was living with family and my uncle had died um, prior to that and he left behind this shed that had all kinds of neat old junk in it like and I live for that so I open up this shed and inside there is antique furniture there's like all kinds of just crazy things hanging from it like there was some big like wooden beam just crazy things and so there was this paint tray that had all of this paper on top and i was going through it and it was music from vaudeville like actual flyers and um different music books and stuff for different performers and I was like oh my gosh this is crazy and then I was finding this composition books that had writing in it of different performances and at the very bottom of the tray this was laying in there and I was like oh my goodness what is that I couldn't believe it I had never seen anything like this so whenever I opened her she was actually filled with pencil leads, like really thick pencil leads. And uh, I actually figured out that um, she was filled with pencil leads because the guy, that's where he kept them. And then he would write in his composition books, um, you know, his performances and the leads were kept in here. <laughs> I just think it's super cool. 
The last favorite piece of mine is this photo album that was gifted to me from a dear friend, my buddy Mike. Um, he gave me this and I still can't believe it. So it's this huge photo album. Um, I believe this is celluloid. I'm sorry if I've gotten that wrong, but I saw something on Instagram about like celluloid albums or boxes or something and they looked very similar to this so uh, but anyway the front is absolutely gorgeous there's this art on here and i have seen a piece of this art hung up somewhere and it had the name of it but i forgot to like put it in my phone so i wouldn't forget uh what this art piece was called but um this album has the most gorgeous velvet on the back Unfortunately, it's rather worn down, but look at that velvet. So stunning. And then there's this amazing clasp on the side and the front is like really nice. Um, so the inside of this album is absolutely gorgeous, though I don't plan to actually use it um, because for one, you can smell like the mildew in here and I don't want it to damage any photos I would put into it. Plus, I mean, I think I would end up ripping up the album, putting images into it. So um, I'm just excited to have this piece. I just think it's a nice big piece and it has this really cool latch on the side and I love it. I just think it displays nice and hey, it matches my glasses. <laughs> So here is my teeny tiny antique collection. Um, there's not really much to it yet and my display isn't really eye candy yet. I really want to do something different with this. I want to have the pieces displayed in glass domes or neat frames. I just want to come up with something that really ties it all together. And I haven't really been able to do that yet, but the truth is that I don't really invest a ton of time into collections these days. I just have so much other things going on in my life. So I just kind of buy things and set them on the shelf. <laughs> so I do have a few other pieces that are packed away that I need to unpack and try to get into here, but this is what I have out at the moment. So I guess I'll start with this bottom shelf. So down here we have my post-mortem photograph and I do apologize for the glare. It's so hard to film at night. And next to her, I have some death cards. So these are cabinet cards from the funeral and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So this one is a recent addition. And I believe that these two are the same uh, lady because they have the same date and the same last name. So this piece is kind of interesting. So the antique mall claimed that this is Victorian butterfly wing art. And whenever I asked the uh, person behind the counter if it was authentic Victorian, they said they believe it was because the seller was pretty knowledgeable about things from that era and that was pretty much all that they sell so i kind of took their word for it but either way i thought this was so beautiful um so it's a scene in venice i believe and that's a man on a gondola uh, correct me if i'm wrong but um i would never have known that was butterfly wings in the background there and that they could still look this good all these years later. So I decided to give that to her because I thought it was kind of nice. <laughs> I do want to change this up though and just come up with something better. Um, there's a few pieces I want to acquire and then it'll all fall into place with how I'm going to display those. So I do have one of these hand plates and on it I have that hair piece and my match safe. Back there I have a cabinet card and a calling card that actually has the guy's face on it. We're going to be doing something with this. This is going to end up framed with some other piece at some point. In this little jewelry box I have some Victorian jewelry like brooches and such. 
I have these really awesome goggles from the 1940s that I love so much. I need to get more pictures of me wearing those. And then I have this stereo card that is really cute and it's from Meadville, PA in 1898. I really like how it was just kind of hand colored. That was their version of, of colorizing things. <laughs> I still have this 1868 hand mirror that always makes my hands absolutely filthy, but it's a really cool piece. So on this shelf, this is where we have some of my cabinet cards and my ambrotypes and daguerreotypes. Um, and then I have something really cool to show you guys. And I should still have my gloves on, but oh well. Um, so this is a glass negative. And I love it. I got this at Weeping Glass uh, recently and I just think it's so cool. So I actually just cleaned a bunch of fingerprints off of it and um, it's going to be framed against uh, some white paper so the negative really stands out. So I can start to actually enjoy it because it's pretty darn cool. So these are probably my two favorite cabinet cards because I absolutely love her whole look here. This was actually from Pittsburgh. This one does not have a decorative back. I believe this one does. Look at that. That is so darn cool. I love these cabinet cards. Look at the cute little girl in the fancy chair and her little dress. It's so adorable. So here is my daguerreotype and it features a woman that has some sort of eye condition. I love her. She is so beautiful. The case is in such good condition. It's wonderful to have something like this that was so well cared for and that is so nice still. There's just like the slightest rip up here, but that's about it. So um, I'm very careful with handling her. And I just keep her closed and safe and put away. Here's one of my newest Ambro types. This one needs a case and I'm gonna do that for her at some point. So this shelf, it's kind of like a random shelf. Um, <laughs> there's just a few things up here like this neat group photo. I have a few group photos that are put away. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. Um, some of my tin types. I have so many tin types, I can't like fit them all out. So I'm gonna get like a little album and just put them in little slots so I can start to actually look at them. And then we have my autographed albums here. You gotta see at least a little bit of this. So that's about it for this antique collection video. I just thought it would be fun to share. I like to collect all kinds of different things and this is just one of my little collections that I happen to have on display at the moment. Uh, the collection will be evolving. I will be working on the displays and adding different objects. I would like to have my collection be like a work of art at some point, but um, for now, you know, with how my life is, it just works out that I just kind of buy things and set them on a shelf, but maybe eventually uh, it'll be all fixed up and looking pretty cool. So uh, stay tuned for future videos on this collection. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and follow me on my Instagram. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.